We have much enthusiasm when we start something new, and inspiration is the other side of enthusiasm. But the enthusiasm goes away after the third, fourth, fifth, sixth rune spread, and expectations leave with enthusiasm. Respectively, rune reading is slightly different when there are no expectations, and you have to read them as they are. Suddenly, this internal translator, called expectation, is turned off. I ask all colleagues to consider this point. There will be a period of time when after a number of runic spreads, the only thing you'll know for sure is that you don't understand anything. Like it is all written in Chinese to you. It is strictly recommended not to stop reading rune spreads during this time. It is essential to work out an internal translator that is not aided by expectation. This is very important. It's like in Google and Yandex search queries. You start typing and they offer you their options. If you get used to such recommendations, you will keep expecting them in the future. It is not without reason that we say that the most important thing in our field is to refuse any expectations. But why? Because the consciousness gets used to relying on something, gets used to having a pillar to lean on. Whereas when you have no expectations, you have nothing to lean on. It is essential to keep practicing rune spreads to break the wall of misunderstanding. And at some point, you will understand what the runes are telling you. You will have a conscious insight when everything comes together, and you will know exactly what to do next. Just don't give up the practice. This is very important. Quite a few of our colleagues start and then break down because of this misunderstanding. Unfortunately, no one has explained to them that this is a mandatory rite of passage. You have to overcome this too, when all the translators and prompts turn off. The gods themselves turn off these prompts and translators. Remember that. And this is why we say, do 30 spreads, 40 spreads. No result will be achieved without practice. It is necessary to work on self-improvement constantly. The runic language is complex. Moreover, there are a lot of masters around, and each has their method of interpreting runes. This is very important. Everyone must have their method of interpretation. When runes speak to a rune master, they speak in a language that the master understands. If other rune masters try to interpret your runic spread, they will have their own interpretation. But the runes are not talking to them, they are talking to you. Therefore, I am addressing all colleagues who are currently listening to us. I would like you to think twice before sharing and posting your spreads on the forum. Even the greatest master can mislead you with his interpretation. Runes are talking to you. And that particular rune was placed in that precise combination and exact position on the world tree for you exclusively. If they were talking to someone else, they would possibly place an entirely different rune on the same place on the tree when asked a question about you, a situation about you but talking to a different rune master. And the reason is that the runes are talking to another master. There are no universal spreads. Runes are not letters of an alphabet. Runes are magical tools, magical forces. When we studied runes together, and you had a teacher guiding you, you know that a given rune has several interpretations. Depending on the capability of the human consciousness, runes may be revealed in an allegorical sense, literal sense, metaphysical or alchemical sense. They have as many different layers of understanding as a person can comprehend. Runes are talking to you, and they take into consideration your layers of understanding. What would happen if another interpreter, who has fewer of these 
layers of understanding than you do confuses you. If you are not confident in your abilities and doubt the validity of your dialogue with runes and trust another master, you will thus block your runic channel. Because runes do not talk to deaf-mute people. To blind ones, they do all right, but not deaf-mute. Take this into consideration. Rune reading is very personal, very personal. Think twice before letting someone else interpret your rune spread. Colleagues just talked about their wise decisions. Set the spread aside for a few days, revisit it in a couple of days, and maybe the stars will position themselves differently. The lunar phase will change, full, waxing, or a waning moon or there will or won't be a solar flare. Maybe all of these things affect your understanding. Maybe the clairvoyant formula for deeper understanding and better contact with runes hasn't kicked in yet and will start working only in two days. And all of a sudden, you have an entirely different understanding. So, practice, feel out your way. But never and ever lean on others' opinions despite any circumstances. This is my instruction to you in your further practice. If you hear other interpretations, turn a deaf ear, as people say. Learn from other sources too, but do remember your own understanding. This is very important. There should be no mediator between you and the runes. Do you need a translator? No, you don't. Otherwise, the consciousness will remember that there is such a translator. Therefore, it will not learn by itself, lest we forget how lazy the subconscious and consciousness are. If it knows that a translator is present, as if the dictionary is always handy, there is no need to learn the words. We don't need a dictionary or a translator. You are capable of understanding everything perfectly yourself. It is only necessary to believe that you understand runes and feel them. The more spreads you cast, the better the results. Take my advice for the future. It concerns all the colleagues. While you learn to talk to runes, it is best to do so using simple language. For example, it is like communicating with a representative of a different linguistic culture. You know his language a little bit. He knows your language a little bit. It is better to speak in simple and monosyllabic phrases to establish good contact. If we start making complex sentences without having mastery of the language, we risk distorting the meaning and being misunderstood. As a result, we will not be perceived correctly. Therefore, while you learn to formulate an intention to give to runes and receive answers, it is best to do it in simple, monosyllabic formulas and phrases, including verbal ones, for the time being, without introducing additional spells. If you ask runes, how will tomorrow go for me? It is better not to burden them with additional information. For example, how will my day be tomorrow if I do not go to work? How will tomorrow go if Peter calls me? You immediately create unrealistic conditions for the runes. Perhaps you will not go to work, and perhaps Peter will not call you. You request them to model a situation that does not exist. Accordingly, they will respond to you with the same amount of uncertainty. For this reason, do it simply, not overloading it. Do it with simple phrases, keeping in mind that it should be clear. It is relevant to the nine-word runes layout. Do not overload it with conventionalities. Do not overload it with conditions. You will have time to learn to prescribe, detail, and complicate these conditions. Thank you very much for your story. I'm still impressed and admire the rune wisdom and how they guide a person. Thank you very much for the knowledge which we take from you. Thank you very much for understanding that knowledge. It means that all of us, the runes, and the forces that support us, work not for nothing. It means that the efficiency of our work increases manifold. The unique ability of runes to lay correctly the resulting algorithm. What happened, happened because you understand the words. 
Our colleague who shared her previous experience did not hear the runes. She did not hear what kind of formula or method would help settle her situation. The runes connected the situation step by step, surprisingly. They have taken information about her skills from her consciousness, which she knows precisely. The runes brought our colleague Natalie to the summer house. They did not bring her to Bali because her cottage is a much more objective, effective and prospective option for her. The cottage opened much wider opportunities for her than, for example, the warm and gentle sun on Bali. Although the warm and gentle sun would relax her consciousness and body much better. But that's wrong. You don't have to do it. You have to take what belongs to you and learn to manage your wealth. You should assess your wealth correctly, including your skills. For example, if you have mastered the technicians of the third main course, use them if it is necessary. Kill two birds with one stone. You will practice the techniques, same time preparing your consciousness to perceive the situation, which in turn opens up many possibilities, and so on. Meaning, runes look very far away and see the person in full view. Therefore, it is so important to learn to trust them. Accordingly, it is also important to learn to trust the gods and the forces behind them. It is best to learn from overarching Odin's channel. There is everything within this channel, what you accept and do not accept, what you can and cannot do, and what you like or dislike. There is absolutely everything there. Choosing the algorithm to achieve the result on such a massive channel with the entire scope of possibilities is much easier. It is much easier even for the omniscient All-Father. Let no doubt trouble you. Worry and thoughts of doubt are very natural processes on the path to any growth. Only a foolish man has no doubts and worries. The only reasonless people are always right about everything. The more we learn, the more our consciousness expands and the more directly proportional feeling of uncertainty grows. That is quite normal. Because a lot of knowledge gives you a multivariate perception. A multivariate perception is the absence of a point selection algorithm. This algorithm also becomes more multivariate. The condition, I'm a fool, I know nothing, is natural even for the most experienced and strong of us in the process of learning. Be afraid of the condition, I am absolutely sure of myself, I am right about everything. The second condition kills magic a bit more than a doubt. Do not abandon the first condition. Let it become an indicator that you have gained knowledge. Since when you have gained knowledge, you may lose the ground under your fit. Because the old conception of the world cannot stay as stable as before. That means you must learn a new one based on your knowledge. There are only two options in this case. Either throw out the new knowledge or embed it into a new conception of the world understanding, changing it accordingly. As you understand yourself, the more and the faster we get this knowledge, the faster and the more the conception changes. So, doubt is a concomitant natural feeling that means that knowledge is there. But in some practices at our work, when you need to perform a ritual, work with a patient, wherever your condition determines the outcome, you must concentrate. Rune divination is an indispensable helper here. It allows you to concentrate on the main things and weed out unnecessary ones. And then, when the work is done, the runes can be removed and the condition can be restored again. Because the best way to learn is when you are in doubt. Remember what it is for. When you know something, it is best not to rely on the old knowledge, leaving a small or wide space for new knowledge. It is best not to spread your thoughts when you work for results, but stay exact, concrete and very fast, like a ballet, like a flying arrow. Best if the switching of these two states, certain, uncertain, will be very fast and will be switched whenever necessary.
The states we live in do not end in themselves. States are tools. This means that they must be switched very quickly depending on the task. Learn this and everything will be much more pleasurable. It can be an indicator, but never be a break. It can be the screen of the surrounding world, but it can't be the final form of being in any case. You have no right to live for a condition. The one who follows the path of magic cannot live for conditions. Remember this.